Hey everybody, it's Alexa from Burke's Nostalgia and I'm here to take you on a tour and tell you a little bit of history about the abandoned Van Reed paper mill. The area around this intersection is so rich in history and there's three main things I want to show you today. So let's go. First up is the Van Reed Covered Bridge. The area around the mouth of the Cacuzan Creek into the Tulpahagan Creek was settled and industrialized by the Van Reed family. They were Dutch immigrants who came to America around 1750 and settled around this creek in the early 1800s. Over the course of the 19th century, the family owned at least three paper mills, a wood mill, a sawmill, and a Union Canal warehouse, all within this vicinity along the Tulpahagan and Cacuzan Creeks. Right in front of where I'm standing was once a wooden covered bridge that spanned 144 feet over the Tulpahawken, which was built by the Van Reed family in 1837 for more convenient travel over the creek. It was one of a few covered bridges along the Tully, the only left today being Wirtz's Red Bridge just down the road. You can still see the stone footing of the Van Reed Bridge on the opposite side of the creek bed. The bridge saw transition from horse and carriage travel to the automobile, but its fate was ultimately to be decided by truck. In 1959, a 5.5-ton tractor-trailer carrying 16 tons of shingles attempted to pass over the 4-ton limit covered bridge. The truck crashed through the decking, leaving the bridge with extensive damage. They tried to partially repair the bridge, but ended up completely removing it in 1964 after deeming it unsafe. That was the end of the Van Reed covered bridge. The paper mill was built in 1825 by Henry Van Reed. It is believed to be one of Spring Township's oldest buildings. The Van Reed family owned and operated it for 70 years until almost the turn of the 20th century. Henry died a year after he opened the mill at only 46 years old, so it was then ran by his son, Charles, between 1826 and 1859. After Charles' death, his son, coincidentally also named Henry, ran it between 1859 and 1879. And then his son, you guessed it, named Charles, ran it from Henry's death until 1896 when it was sold outside of the family. Since then, paper mill companies have been in and out. And as far as I can tell, this building's been abandoned more than it's been occupied. One thing I found interesting, though, is that someone is taking care of it. Most recently, I noticed that between 2011 and 2015 street views on Google Maps is that renovations were completed. Some of the old, rickety-looking structures on the roof were removed, as well as a completely new roof put on, and new windows in some of the locations where they were previously boarded up. As you can see in an earlier clip, the building is advertised as for lease, so if you need a paper mill, get on that. Directly next to the mill in the creek is a dam, which was used to power the turbines that made the paper back in Henry Van Reed's day. When I was doing some research into this area, I found a super interesting article that I'm going to link to in the description. There's an organization called American Rivers. Its sole purpose is to secure funding for the removal of dams just like this one at Van Reed Paper Mill. When dams like these were built in waterways all over the country, industry was revolutionizing the way society lived. But the damming also caused real issues for the ecology of the creeks. Habitats were lost for native species and formed for species that naturally wouldn't have been there. Now almost 200 years have gone by and most of these dams are no longer in use but still altering the ecology of the creeks. American Rivers is removing the dams and restoring the creeks to their natural state. In fact, as far back as 2013, the Van Reed Mill Dam was listed on their website as one of the removal projects underway. In 2018, an article ran in the Reading Eagle stating that the funding was finally approved to remove this dam. Then, just a month ago, in July 27, 2020, I found an article, the one linked, that was written by a woman who is VP of Communications for American Waters. She's originally from this area and knew she had family ties to old mills, so when she saw that her organization was preparing to destroy a dam in Spring Township, she reached out to her mother. It turns out she's the fourth great-granddaughter of Henry Van Reed.
In a very strange coincidence, it seems that the ancestor of the man who built the dam is going to be partially responsible for its demise. I just wanted to share this tidbit because in a world where things can seem chaotic at times, this kind of felt like the little piece of harmonic closure we could all use in 2020. Our article stated that the final preparations are being made and this dam's going to be gone within the next few weeks or months. The last place I'm going to show you is this quaint old house. It sits directly across the street from the mill and it was definitely the home of the Van Reeves at some point. Uh, it's currently owned by Body Zone. They purchased it and the entire property that the complex sits on in 2001. And they're currently, it looks like they're using it for storage equipment for sports stuff. The place seems to be in a bit of disrepair and could definitely use some TLC, so hopefully Body Zone doesn't leave this piece of history to rot. Besides that, I don't have a whole lot of info on this place. I'm assuming it was just a private residence for the last few hundred years. If you know anything about it, feel free to drop that info in the comments.
Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more great Berks County local content. See ya!